It's undisputedly the greatest sports car icon of all time. The 911 celebrates its 60th anniversary in 2023, and we have the unique opportunity to get to know all 27 derivatives at a speed dating event. The choice of 911 variants has never been greater than in the 992 model series, each with its very own character. Which one is the most convincing and why? Motivision presenter Julian slips into the role of the bachelor and awards his only rose at the end of the road trip through the Black Forest and the Palatinate. We also took a look back at 60 years of the Porsche 911 and talked to experts who share their insights. I've never driven a road car that drives as perfectly as this car. Who doesn't dream of being in this favourable situation of The Bachelor? 27 candidates want to win my heart, but only one can make it and take home this rose in the end. I have to send everyone else home. Where is the chemistry right from the start? With whom do I feel the most emotion myself? With whom can I imagine a future together? That's what I want to find out today. And before we set off, here's an overview of who's on the road trip today. Three different body shapes, nine different engines, rear or all-wheel drive, and a number of special models resulted in 27 different versions of the 911. Starting with the entry-level Carrera model with 385 horsepower, through to the top of the range Turbo S engine with 650 horsepower, through to the track focused GT3 and GT3 RS models. And then there are limited special models such as the 911 Dakar, Sport Classic, and ST. Right at the start, we go into full swing with the extroverted GT3 RS. On board, Matthias Roll responsible for aerodynamics at Porsche. Oh, hello. 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 Greetings, Julian. I'm Matthias. You can be by my side today for my first one-on-one -on -one date on the subject of aerodynamics. Exactly. I'm really looking forward to it. We have a real crusher as our first vehicle, the GT3 RS. Is that the spearhead of Porsche at the moment? Definitely. Anything that is at the forefront of circuit racing, this is the right place for us. I'm very excited. Let's get on the track. Let's go. With the starting price of just under 250,000 euros, the GT3 RS is one of the most expensive 911 variants. The 525 horsepower boxer engine is the most powerful naturally aspirated engine in Porsche's portfolio. It accelerates to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.2 seconds half a second slower than a Turbo S. But what counts with this car is the performance on the racetrack. Cornering speed. Downforce. Emotion. Does this make it a possible contender for the Rose? What am I actually looking for here? I can't quite put my finger on it. It has to have something special. It shouldn't be a Porsche that drives around the city every day. And I come from Munich, where there really are a lot of Porsches driving around. It has to be something special. It has to catch my eye somehow. This means that the entry-level models such as the Carrera Basis, S or T, will presumably be dropped. The GT3 RS is definitely something special. The first few metres in the GT3 RS, you feel a lot of vibration straight away. That's quite a difference to the normal Carrera or Turbo, which are relatively quiet. Here you feel the vibration straight away. It's loud. So in terms of emotions, that's already a plus point. Yes, definitely. The suspension is, of course, much harder than on our normal Carrera, simply because we also have to control the downforce somewhere with the suspension because it is, of course, significantly higher than on a normal production Carrera. To be precise, the GT3 RS generates 860 kilograms of downforce, twice as much as its 991 series predecessor. 
We have a very striking feature on this car. We have a huge rear wing. What was Porsche thinking with this huge rear wing? The aim was clearly to improve the circuit performance of the vehicle. And as we had reached a certain limit in terms of engine development, the way forward for this vehicle was aerodynamics. We increased the rear wing by a further 40% compared to its predecessor. Now that's a lot. And to ensure that we don't get worse in terms of straight line performance, we've equipped the whole thing with an active system, also for the first time in the GT environment, with a DRS, a drag reduction system. Adapted from Formula One. Exactly, from motorsport, simply to reduce the resistance on the straight and to have the downforce where you need it, namely in the corners. The GT3 RS is a very loud candidate. German engineering in every detail and an absolute force on the racetrack. First drive in the GT3 RS, that was a blast to start with. And that emotion was there immediately. You immediately feel connected to the car. You feel everything. You have a feeling for the road and you can hear the engine working right behind you. I don't know if it's the right thing yet. I mean, with the huge rear wing, you are obviously very present. You immediately stand out everywhere. For some people, that might be nice. For others, it's something that speaks a little against everyday usability. But let's see what the next car has to offer. Without a break, it's time for the contrasting program, changing into the turbo convertible. The passenger here is Christoph Henrici from the sales department. So, the second single date on my trip. In 1974, Porsche transplanted a turbocharger into a 911 for the first time. The Porsche 930 Turbo with 260 horsepower was born. Six generations later, not only the Turbo, but also the Carrera models have a bi-turbo on board. But the iconic name still remains. The entry-level turbo with 580 horsepower and the Turbo S with 650 horsepower are the spearheads of the 911 in terms of performance. 2.8 and 2.7 seconds respectively from 0 to 100 km per hour without any electric assistance are quite something. Between the two models, the more powerful Turbo S has a huge purchase share of 85%. True to the motto, the best or nothing. The price of just under 247,000 euros fades into the background. However, Bachelor Julian's next one-off date is in the 20,000 euro cheaper turbo base model as a convertible. The turbo is simply a jack of all trades. It is, and that is always the challenge. To make the car in such a way that it's suitably sporty, but also to meet the comfort requirements of our clientele. We have a car that can be used universally. I can drive it to the opera, but I can just as easily take it to the racetrack. The car has no rough edges, it's just perfect. That's one way of putting it. That's the case. Maybe he's a bit too perfect for me. That's something you hear again and again. Mm. That it's already too perfect. It's also due to the fact that we listen very carefully to our customers, who simply have expectations and sporty aspirations. But of course, don't want to miss out on certain comfort features. And as I said, it's the best or nothing. The Turbo and the Turbo S, what can you say? This is simply a perfect car. It can do everything, from comfortable to racetrack. It reaches 100 km per hour in 2.8 seconds. This thing is simply a brute. For me, it's actually too round again, too perfect. I don't have any rough edges that I could really fall in love with. After a short lunch break, the 27 911 derivatives, some of them in duplicate, cross the Rhine by ferry.
After two completed dates, there are still three more to go. And the next one is with a very special model and a very special person at the wheel. Racing legend, Walter Röhrl. For the next stage, I hand over the steering wheel for once, and not just to anyone, but to rally legend Walter Röhrl. Thank you very much for letting me drive along with you here. With pleasure. And we're on our way to the next single date. It's about the 911 ST. At 292,000 euros, the 911 ST is the most expensive derivative of the 992 generation. And unless it comes with the heritage design package and a starting number of your choice, it is almost indistinguishable from a GT3 Touring. The most striking difference is the modified air ducting behind the front wheel arch. The trained eye will also spot the gurney flap on the extendable rear spoiler. With the 4-litre boxer engine and 525 horsepower from the GT3 RS, it is the most powerful 992 with a naturally aspirated engine and manual gearbox. It is also the lightest 911. You can hardly tell from the outside how brutal the ST is. Perhaps exactly the ingredients to get the rose at the end of the evening. I'm looking for a 911 derivative that offers me a lot of emotion, where the chemistry is right, and I just find it really good to be able to hand over the steering wheel and let myself be driven, to be able to concentrate completely on the car. Walter, where did you drive the ST for the first time, and what was your initial reaction? I was already driving this car at a very early stage. And you realized straight away that this was going to be something special. And then in the last six months, I realized that the car was basically in the final stages of completion. And it's going to be something really extreme. The special model ST is only being built 1963 times, in honour of the year the Colt sports car was launched, and thus celebrates 60 years of the Porsche 911. The name goes back to a very special model that took part in races such as Daytona, Targa Florio, or the 24 Hours of Le Mans, the 911 ST from 1969. The somewhat sportier S version with an optional competition version, which was only ordered a maximum of 26 times and unofficially gives it the T for touring. You also have to say that there's a lack of insulation. It's a bit louder in here. You get a direct feel for the road. And if you hold the GT3 Touring next to it, it's even more designed for long distances. Yes, it's a pure, a fun car for the country road to drive through mountain passes, winding roads. That's the maximum you can get out of it. I've never driven a road car that drives as perfectly as this car. I would go as far as to say that I've never driven a competition car that steers like this car. After these words, the bar is set extremely high. It's a real contender for my rose at the end of the day, but I will also be able to drive it myself later. But yes, that's very important, that you experience for yourself when you accelerate, how it hangs on the throttle, the thrust behind it. You notice this lightness, that's enormous. We even get behind the wheel of the ST. First, a speed date with a real gentleman, the 911 Sport Classic. The special model, which is limited to 1250 units, is based on the 992 Turbo, but with the typical ducktail, is reminiscent of the old Carrera RS models of the original model. It follows in the footsteps of the 911 Sport Classic, based on the 997 GTS, 
of which only 250 were built at the time. This time at our side, Christian Heck from the Porsche Exclusive Manufacture Department. That's a bit different to the ST, who wanted a bit... It's a bit more radical in that respect. You also feel the flywheel a little more. And we have a more of a gentleman driver variant here. And still a manual gearbox, 550 horsepower on the rear axle. 550 horsepower, that's also... The turbo engine, which is normally only available as four-wheel drive, that is, all-wheel drive. And in this case, rear-wheel drive. OK, but we're still in a more dignified vehicle. At least that's how I feel. Yes, absolutely. You can talk about the beauty and the beast. You've already driven those beasts. This is the beauty. This beauty delivers 550 horsepower, 30 less than in the turbo. The Sprint to 100, therefore, takes over one second longer. For purists, there is a manual seven-speed gearbox instead of PDK. On the one hand, we are building on the 997 Sport Classic. This was introduced in 2009. That was a restart for the small series activities at Porsche Exclusive. There had been a long break since the 964 Turbo Leichtbau. We then relaunched it in 2009. And it is modelled on the 997 Sport Classic, but is also the second car on the heritage design strategy. The first one is right here in front of us. The Targa 4S Heritage Design Edition. The 992 examples of the special edition cost at least 183,000 euros. It will be two more cars, mm -hmm. then we'll celebrate the 70s. That'll be a bit crazier. And the 80s. That's when we get really rebellious, you could say. Sport Classic already has two major advantages. Firstly, we have a manual gearbox again, and secondly, it is limited. Those are, of course, two real plus points in its favour, and it's not as uncompromising and aggressive as an ST. You can just drive it wonderfully through the city, pull up at the opera, and it's simply a classic. I like it. Speaking of the ST, we come back to the young and wild ones that celebrate 60 years of the Porsche 911. After a ride along with the rally legend Walter Röhrl, it's time for the bachelor to get behind the wheel himself. OK, we're sitting in the 911 ST together with Frank. Hello and welcome. Frank Moser, series manager for the 911 and 718. And this time I'm allowed to take the wheel myself. Just now with Walter Röhrl at my side, who warmly recommended that I drive the ST myself. Basically, it's a bit like a GT3 RS with a touring package, if you like. However, it's not comparable with a GT3 touring package. It's all more natural. Since the 991.2 generation, Porsche has also offered a more discreet touring package without a wing, in addition to the GT3 road racer with fixed rear wing. This is extremely popular with customers, but is significantly less radical than the 911 ST. It's a completely different car. It weighs 40 kilograms less than the GT3 Touring with manual gearbox. It weighs 70 kilograms less than the GT3 RS, and ultimately you notice the lightness of 1,380 kilos with a full tank. You actually notice it with the 8% shorter ratio manual gearbox compared to the GT3 Touring, with the weight reduction measures. This makes the car very special and significantly different again in terms of agility and response behaviour compared to a GT3 Touring. That's another thing. You can rev the car up incredibly. Yes, it turns 9,000 and it responds incredibly dynamically and quickly at the bottom. It's precisely these reduced weights in the rotating masses and you simply notice that in the response behaviour. And you have to realise that first. 
At 6,000, the car becomes so agile that you think to yourself, now comes the next gear. But no, you can still get 3,000 revs more. Incredibly agile. That brings a grin to my face. Yes. That's what makes the car so special. It's not just the looks. It's the really even better handling than a GT3 Touring has. And you wouldn't think that you could make a GT3 Touring look even better. But with this one, it really has succeeded. Twenty-seven different 911 992s, some of the most exciting of which we drove today in a direct comparison. The 911 ST impresses with pure and emotional driving pleasure. As wild as a racing car, but just discreet enough for everyday use. The GT3 RS has secured the grand entrance. The enormous rear wing not only makes it an eye-catcher, but also a weapon for every track day. Past meets modernity in the limited edition sport classic from Porsche exclusive manufacture. At the same time, a serious fun car and a sought after collector's item. And it is the nerd from Zuffenhausen, the turbo. It can do everything and is at home everywhere. Power to the max. And if required, as comfortable as a flying carpet. Which of the four finalists will emerge victorious from the Night of Roses? And a long and eventful road trip full of wonderful impressions comes to an end. I was able to get to know some derivatives of the 27. And it's time for the Night of Roses. And it's actually right now. The sun has gone and I have a rose to give away here. We'll make it short and sweet. This rose goes to the 911 ST. Love is about emotions, and I felt this emotion in this car right from the start. It's the perfect mix of a really aggressive, fun car. But you can still have a certain degree of everyday practicality that you need. You have a boot, we have a manual gearbox, and it's limited on top of that. So that's my choice of the hour. Now I just have to persuade my colleagues at Porsche to let me take it with me.